Blade Senua Sacrifice is a brand new ambitious title from Ninja Theory that's very far off from what you'd expect from these developers. For reference, Ninja Theory is known for working on games like the Devil May Cry reboot and Heavenly Sword, two combat heavy action titles. While Hellblade does feature some action in it, it's very much more a puzzle adventure game with little combat sections sprinkled on top of it, rather than it being the main focus. Hellblade is particularly a very interesting title for a lot of reasons. It's not only developed by Ninja Theory, but it's also self-published by the developer, retailing only for 30 bucks digitally on PS4 and PC. It's an interesting take we've seen some AAA developers take on of releasing lower priced titles or even self-publishing them online. This allowed Ninja Theory to really dictate the creative choices with the title. With the creative freedom, Ninja Theory wrote a story based on Celtic mythology that has you play as a woman named Senua who suffers from a mental illness that gives her hallucinations both visually and audible voices in her head. The manifestations in Senua's mind border that of reality to her, and Ninja Theory went out to experts on the matter to consult their vision for the illness in the game. So while probably most people that are playing this game don't suffer from something like psychosis or something similar, you can expect to get a glimpse at the struggles of the disease and it truly is an experience. When you start the game, you're not explained or really told anything. There's literally no UI at all. The game truly wants to make this feel more like an immersive experience than a traditional video game. In Hellblade, Senua is going on a journey to free herself from her inner demons. This past trauma and stress are explained through hallucinations and visions that Senua sees over the real world. Her doubt and her fears manifesting themselves in her mind. You'll see the world desaturated and at times overexposed, it's all coming to the experiences of having something like psychosis play out for our main protagonist. As the player, it truly made me feel claustrophobic, have some anxiety, and generally feel very uncomfortable at times when playing Hellblade. The voices in the game constantly speaking to you, telling you that you're doing something wrong or something right, constantly conflicting each other is stress inducing, only adding onto the feeling of uneasiness when playing the game. There were times where I truly felt like I just wanted a break from the game to pause it, take off my headphones and go take a walk. It's really just an intensive feeling. It's more purposely stress inducing to recreate those feelings that Senua is going through with her disease. Sure, the player can pause those voices and go take a break, but to the people living with that disease, that life sadly isn't a video game, there isn't a pause button. And that's pretty much one of the most eye-opening moments I've ever had playing this game or in a video game in general. This is a game you truly need to play with a pair of headphones for that in-depth immersion. I think a lot of not so bright people will look at Hellblade and see a female protagonist warrior with a third person camera view and immediately think Horizon Zero Dawn. That's a very bad comparison because Hellblade is very different, it's pretty linear in its gameplay as compared to an open world. You'll have to explore small areas to look for glyphs in the environment that you'll have to match up with the glyphs you see on the door. It's clever at first, but it becomes a quite repetitive puzzle in the 6-8 hour campaign that really feels more like something to elongate the gameplay. Occasionally you'll be thrown into combat sequences where you have to fight other manifested warriors. The combat is barely explained, though it's very simple and easy to pick up quickly. At first the enemies will seem a bit repetitive and they'll come in small waves, but they progress over time. The introduction of boss fights and later on fights will mix up the enemy times and beef up the amount of characters you see at once. In these scenes, despite the basic combat scenarios, it still feels very tense and the anxiety once again kicks up. And this is in part thanks to the message the game gives you after your first death. After Senua's first death, it's revealed to be a vision in her head and the voices in her head tell her that the growing black mark on her hands is called the Rot. Every time she dies or has a vision of death, the rot will grow from her hand up until it reaches to her head, making her lose all the progress so far. It gets the already stressful situation of not wanting to die in a video game and cranks it up to 100. Visually, Hellblade is a very pretty game. Running on Unreal Engine 4, textures and lighting effects look absolutely fantastic. With that said, there are some pop-in issues here and there, mostly with things like the grass and elements in the sky, like the falling leaves from the forest. If you're playing on PS4, the game runs at 1080p with frame rates just slightly above 30 frames per second on the base PS4. On PS4 Pro, there's two game modes, one that targets a 1440p resolution and an FPS enabled mode that targets 60 frames per second at a dynamic resolution. Of course, if you want to get better performance, you can go the PC route, though with my GTS 970 and i7-4790K, I was hitting a frame rate of 50-60 to 60 with VSync turned on and very high settings on. 
As far as music and sound goes, the music is pretty forgettable or rather hardly ever there. Most of the sound design is focused on ambient noise and the voices inside Senua's head that honestly is one of the most immersive sound design choices in a video game. It shows that for all those gamers out there that really just care about graphics, sound design plays a just as equal part. In the end, there's no doubt that Hellblade is one of the most intensive video games I've played in a very long time. It manages to tackle a very sensitive subject while still giving perspective to people like me that don't suffer from this mental illness or have to face the struggles that many people have to face every day that do have it. As a video game though, the title is definitely not for everyone. If you hated puzzle quote unquote walking simulators before, this may not be up your alley. It's really a game you have to be open to to experience for what it is, and more importantly what it's trying to show. If you're open to the idea of it, then for 30 bucks you surely are getting a worthwhile game and a very lasting experience. That's my review of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. It's out for PS4 and PC this week. If you want to check it out, I'll have links to it in the description down below. And as always, if you have any questions about the game or the review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. I try to be as vague as possible with the story because it's only 6 to 8 hours long and I don't really want to spoil it too much if I don't have to, so I try to be as vague as possible while still being informative. As always, thank you for watching the review. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like, subscribe for more content just like this, and if there's a game you want to see reviewed in the future, please let me know ahead of time in the comment section down below. Thank you all once again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.